Hello dear students, welcome. This is Jocelyn Yaa. In this class, I am going to continue lesson Karna. In the previous part, we learned that Karna met the grandsire, grandfather, the eldest of the race, Bhishma, when Bhishma was on his deathbed. Bhishma wanted Karna to join Pandavas because he was the eldest son of Kunti. And also Bhishma wanted Karna to end his enmity against Pandavas. But Karna told the grandsire Bhishma that he had eaten Duryodhana's sat and said that he should be true to his lineage and also Karna had given a word I mean a promise to Duryodhana that if the situation and the time demands he would even sacrifice his life give his life to Duryodhana to save Duryodhana and he told the grandsire the same that he is greatly indebted to Duryodhana and wanted to give his life if the situation demanded. So Duryodhana, sorry, Karna did not agree to what Bhishma said. Bhishma thought for a while and agreed with Karna. He blessed Karna to go and help Duryodhana. After taking the blessings of Duryodhana, sorry, Bhishma, Karna entered the battlefield. Duryodhana, who was unhappy, who had lost all the hopes after losing Bhishma, was extremely happy when he saw Karna entering into the battlefield. Okay, entry of Karna encouraged the Kauravas. Okay, and in today's class, I am going to complete this lesson. And in this part, we are going to study how Karna died. Okay, see the death of Karna. The princess of the Kaurava army installed Karna as Generalissimo. Generalissimo means a commander leading the army or a general leading the army. So, the Kauravas made Karna the commander in chief, the leader of the army. Karna stood up in his gorgeous war chariot driven by Salya. Salya was the charioteer of Karna. Okay, and his war chariot was extremely gorgeous, very beautiful. Okay, the dauntless, dauntless means fearless, the dauntless confidence of his bearing, of his form, and his great renown as a warrior heartened the Kauravas. Heartened means encouraged. Renown means popularity. He was popular as a great fighter. Okay, he was popular as a great fighter. He was known as a lover of battles. And when he entered in his war chariot driven by Salya, the Kauravas who had lost all the hopes were encouraged. They were heartened, heartened means encouraged by the presence of Karna. So what happens? Then followed a great battle. The son of Surya sent a dazzling arrow which spat fire and made for Arjuna like a serpent with its flaming double tongue out. As soon as Karna entered the battlefield, he sent a dazzling arrow towards Arjuna. And this arrow moved like a serpent snake with two tongues out, spitting fire. See what happens. Then Krishna, Arjuna's charioteer, at the nick of time, pressed the vehicle five fingers deep in the mud so that the serpent shaft just missed, missed Partha's head but stuck off his helmet. As soon as Karna entered the battlefield, he fixed a dart and shot the arrow and the arrow went, the shaft means arrow here. The shaft went towards Arjuna like a serpent, like a snake with two tongues out spitting fire. At the, see, 
Krishna was Arjuna's charioteer. Salya was the charioteer of Karna and Krishna was the charioteer of Arjuna. So when the shaft sent the dazzling arrow sent by Karna was moving towards Arjuna, Krishna at the nick of time, it was at the right time, just at the right time, pressed the vehicle using his power. He pressed the vehicle five fingers down. Five fingers down. Okay, see. He pressed the vehicle down five fingers deep in the mud so that the serpent shaft, serpent shaft means the arrow, just missed Parthas and Partha refers to Arjuna. Okay. If Krishna had not pressed the vehicle down, that shaft would have removed, separated the head from Arjuna's body. Arjuna would have been killed. But Krishna pressed the board, I mean, uh, vehicle down five fingers deep in the mud. As a result, instead of his neck, his helmet fell down. Thus, Arjuna was saved by Krishna. See what happens. Arjuna was red with shame. He was embarrassed. Okay. He was red with shame and anger. He fixed a dart on his bow to make an end of Karna. This time, Karna, okay, fixed a dart to end Karna. See what happens. And Karna's fated hour was come and as had been foretold, the left wheel of his chariot suddenly sank in the blood mire. Okay, blood mire means, you know, mire means wet. The total area was wet with blood. Okay, so in that, in such an, that's called blood mire, a wet, wet area. So when Karna was moving towards Arjuna after, you know, uh, shooting the arrow, his uh, left wheel of the chariot sunk in the mud. His fated hour has come. Final hour has come. And has already been foretold, foretold means told in advance. Okay, as already the author says, as had been foretold, the left wheel of his chariot suddenly sank in the blood mire. He jumped down on the ground to lift the wheel up from the mud. His fated hour has come. His final hour has come. See how Karna dies. He, as well as the uh, vehicle, you know, the left wheel sunk in the mud. He jumped from the chariot down to lift it. See what he did. Wait a minute, he cried. My chariot has sunk in the ground. Great warrior as you are and knowing Dharma as you do, you would certainly not take unfair advantage of this accident. I shall presently set my cart right and give you all the battle you want. Karna told these words to Arjuna. Karna got down from his chariot to lift the wheel. Got it? At the time he said, wait a minute. My chariot has sunk in the mud. Great warrior. He called Arjuna a great, great warrior as you are and knowing Dharma as you do. See, Dharma says when the opponent is not ready for the fight, a Kshatriya is not supposed to shoot arrows or kill him. There's no dharma. You would certainly not take unfair advantage of this accident. He said, don't take unfair advantage. I'm not ready for the fight. So don't shoot arrows. Wait for a minute. I will lift my chariot wheel and I will give you the fight you want. Okay, so Karna pleaded Arjuna to remember the law, the dharma, the rule of the war. Okay, okay, see. Arjuna hesitated. Karna was now somewhat perturbed, disturbed on account of the mishap. Mishap means accident, a sudden accident happening. He remembered the curse that had been pronounced on him and again appealed to Arjuna's sense of honor. Okay, he, he was little disturbed. The lift, the wheel was not moving. Again he pleaded, he requested Arjuna to be, uh, to follow the rules of war. Okay. Uh, he was really disturbed and he remembered the curse pronounced on him by Parashurama. See what happens. Krishna intervened. Intervened means interfered. Okay, come in between. Ha Karna, he exclaimed. It is well that you too remember that there are things like fair play. Karna wanted Arjuna to be fair, to follow the Dharma. Okay, according to the rules of the war prevailing then, a Kshatriya was not supposed to use arms against his enemy if the enemy was not ready to fight. Here Karna was not ready to fight, he was lifting the wheel. So he remembered, you know, he reminded uh, Arjuna to follow the rules of uh, war. 
to follow dharma two times when he repeated krishna intervened and he said aha karna you to remember dharma see what he says now that you are in difficulty you remember them indeed as you are in difficulty you are talking about the rules of i mean the rules of for dharma fair play see what he says but when you and duryodhana and dushasana and shakuni dragged draupadi to the all of assembly and insulted her how was it you forgot them utterly utterly means completely now as you are in danger you want arjuna to follow dharma where was the same dharma when you duryodhana dushasana and shakuni dragged the draupadi into the hall of a hall of assembly and insulted her where was dharma then see you helped invigil dharma putra who was fond of play but was unskilled addict to gamble and you cheated him dharma putra refers to yudhishthira krishna reminds karna when karna was not uh, uh, when karna did not uh, follow fair play dharma first incident karma reminded him was draupadi incident second karna provoked okay he provoked he, he appreciated falsely and made dharma i mean the dharma putra yudhishthira to play the game of dice and lose everything okay karna knew very well that dharma putra yudhishthira was not skilled at it skilled at playing but still he simply provoked him and made him play and lose everything krishna reminded these incidents when karna was not fair see what what more he says where add your fair play hidden itself then he reminded these two incidents draupadi's and you know encouraging falsely dharma putra to play the game of dice and lose everything where was dharma then about which you are talking now see was it fair play to refuse to give to yudhishthira his kingdom when according to the pledge the 12 years of forest life and the 13th year incognito were duly completed see after losing the in the game of dice okay duryodhana sent the pandavas to exile for 13 years 12 years they were they had to live forest life and one year incognito incognito means hiding identity they had to hide their identity and live for one year in that one in 13th year that is okay total 13 years that they had to live in exile 12 years in forest and one year in congregate in congress hiding their appearance five pandavas had to live without revealing their identity to anyone if anybody came to about their identity again they had to go for 12 or 13 years of exile this was a condition put by duryodhana to give the kingdom back what they had lost in the game and they had completed the 12 years of exile in i mean life in forest and also one year of incognito and when they came back duryodhana was not ready to give the kingdom at that time karna supported duryodhana where was the fair play then what is what krishna question karna see so what more he says what had happened to the dharma you appeal for now you conspired with the wicked men who sought to poison and kill bhima once you know some wicked men wanted to kill bhima even he to was he to join them he to conspired with them conspirators making an evil plan to kill someone okay where was the fair play when you with some people wanted to kill poison and kill bima see you acquiesced in the plot to burn the pandavas alive when sleeping in the palace of wax into which they had been lured lured means attracted see pandavas were once attracted Uh, it means they were, they, they, they were attracted by the wax house of wax it was a trap prepared by the kauravas okay so when they entered the wax house you know these kauravas wanted to burn them karna accepted it means accepted it without protest he did not he did not uh, tell duryodhana that it is it was wrong he did not tell duryodhana that killing someone like this is wrong so where was your fair play when you accepted without protest killing of the pandavas when they were attracted into the wax house where was the fair play then see 
what had happened to dharma all that time what did dharma tell you when violent ants were led on draupadi and you were looking on enjoying the sight did you not then mock at her saying your husbands have left you unprotected go and marry another husband he reminds the same incident when you know draupadi was dragged into the hall of assembly she was insulted at the time karna was mocking he was laughing loudly and he was mocking he, he teased her by telling that your husband sav left you go and marry another husband okay see the tongue that was not ashamed to utter that means speak those words now talks of chival ritual means fair play ideal i mean ideals okay chival indeed when a mob of you surrounded the young abhimanyu and shamelessly slew him was that chivalry wicked man do not now do not talk now of chivalry and fair play for you have never honored them you have not honored chivalry fair play dharma and you don't demand it now he remember one more incident killing of abhimanyu see what did he say when you surrounded the young abhimanyu abhimanyu was the son of uh, arjuna okay you surrounded the young abhimanyu and shamelessly slew him slew him is kill okay he was a young boy arjuna sorry arjuna son abhimanyu he entered the chakravyu and first but he couldn't come out at that time karna and others surrounded him and they killed him where was fair play at that time so don't demand dharma when you have not observed it is what krishna told karna krishna was angry at karna when karna demanded twice arjuna to be fair karna immediately intervened and remanded many instances when karna was not chivalrous did not follow the fair play did not follow dharma see what happens when krishna was denouncing him in this manner in order to urge arjuna to prompt action karna bent his head in shame and uttered not a word when karna was denouncing okay denouncing means here publicly declare someone as wrong when he was publicly declaring that karna was wrong karna just put his head down he did not speak a word krishna did all these things in order to urge urge means you know force arjuna to shoot arrows see what happens he silently ascended the chariot leaving the wheel still stuck in the mud and took his bow and sent an arrow at arjuna with unerring aim and such power that it stunned him for a moment unerring means accurate when krishna denounced him he just put his head down left the wheel as it is got into the chariot and again he shot an arrow accurately at arjuna see what happens arjuna was totally stunned shocked for a moment karna utilized the respite one to jump down again and hurriedly try to lift the chariot wheel up but the curse was too strong for him and on fortune had deserted the great warrior okay so arjuna was totally shocked when second time the arrow uh, shot at him was uh, you know came like a serpent first it came like a serpent second time it stunned him totally so he was uh, standing shocked arjuna was standing so at the time you know respite interval a short break so when arjuna was standing shocked you know again karna got down to lift his wheel chariot but unfortunately the wheel chariot did not move see what happens the wheel would not budge budge means move though he strove with all his great strength though he used all his strength to lift the wheel he could not lift it successfully see what happens then he tried to recall the mantras of mighty astras he had learned from parshurama but his memory failed in the hour of his need even as parshurama had foretold parshurama had already cursed pronounced a curse that when he needed the invoke a mantra he could not invoke them the same thing happened here he tried to invoke recall remember unfortunately his fated hour had come and he could not remember the mantras to use the brahmastra see what happens waste no more time arjuna cried madhava krishna send your shaft shaft means arrow and slay slay means kill your wicked enemy send arrow and kill him arjuna's mind was wavering arjuna you know he was not ready to do so because he knew that it was not proper it was not fair see his hand hesitated to do what was not chivalry see he was a very ideal person he was a very noble man he did not do when krishna told him to shoot arrows he knew that it was unfair 
But when Krishna said this, the poet says, Arjuna accepted this command of the Lord and sent an arrow which cut and severed the head of the Radeya. Radeya refers to Karana, Radha's son. So when Krishna urged Karna, he had to obey his Lord. Arjuna had to obey his Lord Krishna so and he sent an arrow which separated the head of Karna from his body. Thus he killed Arjuna, I mean Karna. The poet had not the heart, heart to impute. Impute means put responsibility of this act to Arjuna who was the embodiment of nobility. Embodiment means example. Arjuna is a great example for nobility. Okay, so when Krishna told him to shoot arrows, he hesitated, but he had to obey the orders of his Lord Krishna. So, the author, you know, Chakravarti Rajagopalajari says, I don't like to put the responsibility of killing Karna on Arjuna. Okay, because Arjuna is still a, an embodiment. Okay, so an example of nobility says, it was the Lord Krishna that incited, incited means encouraged Arjuna to kill Karna when he was vainly trying to raise his chariot out of the mud in which it had stuck. Raj Gopalachari says, I, can, I cannot give, the, I cannot put the responsibility, I, I, I don't blame Arjuna for killing Karna. It was Krishna who encouraged Arjuna to shoot arrow and kill Karna. Okay, though Arjuna killed him, the author was not ready to blame Arjuna for this act. Okay, see what happens. See, remember Arjuna shot arrow when Karna was not ready for the fight. He was, when Karna was lifting, it was not chivalrous, but still he did it. But author was not ready to put the blame in because Arjuna just obeyed what his Lord Krishna said. See, according to the code of honor, law of war, according to the code of honor and laws of war prevailing then, prevailing existing then, it was wholly wrong. Wholly means completely wrong. What completely wrong? Shooting arrow or using weapons against someone who is not ready for the fight. See, Arjuna killed Karna when Arjuna was not, sorry, Arjuna killed Karna when Karna was not, you know, using any weapons, when he was not ready for the fight, when he was lifting the wheel. So that according to the code of, I mean, uh, honor and law of war, it was totally wrong. Okay. Who could bear the responsibility for breaches of uh, Dharma except the Lord himself? When Lord himself has breached, broke the law, what can be done? In this way, Raj Gopalachari ends the lesson. Okay. Arjuna killed Karna, but still he was a noble man because he just obeyed what his Lord told him. Of course, killing of Karna was not right because Arjuna shot arrows when Karna was not ready for the fight. When Karna was busy in lifting the wheel from the blood mine. But still, the author Rajkopalachari calls him a noble man. Okay, so in this way, Karna's life ended in the Kurukshetra war. Though a brave warrior, because of some of the mistakes did in the past and because of the curse incurred on him, Karna lost his life in the Kurukshetra. I hope you have understood this lesson. Okay. Please do go through all the videos once again. Note down the meanings of difficult words. Okay, read the textbook first thoroughly, critically. Analyze the situation. Analyze the you know situations. Watch the video. I'm sure you will be thorough with this. Okay, so please stay tuned, dear students, and relax on with one more topic. Take care. Don't go out. Stay home, stay safe, see you soon.